I can't go back. And so I called up my recruiter. I was like, hey, I just want to give you notice. Like, I'm on my lunch break right now. I ain't going back to work. I couldn't even do anything for close to three days. I couldn't code. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't, I couldn't even do my job. I was just numb. Hey. How's Hold it going? Me. I'm alive. <laughs> we recorded last night. And I really liked it. And I got some positive feedback from some folks that I shared it with. Last night we discussed uh, terminating uh, business relationships. Yeah. In which I I basically uh, exercised my my savage day, and uh, <laughs> AKA purge. Mm. And um, yeah, people spoke highly of you, Odie. Oh really? They say yeah. they say that you uh, appear to be very wise. Hmm. That's uh, good to hear, even though I do foolish things from time to time. <laughs> and <Yeah>. then, <laughs> and, and you know, that, that one hurts more because it's like, you know, it's different if you didn't know something and then you fell prey to it, right? It's something, it's something else when you know this was going to happen, you, know, you knew better, but it still happened to you anyway, right? Yeah. It's the story of my life, I think. So, so this topic is what? Yeah, yeah, the dark side of software engineering, right? Of being a software engineer. Um, okay. Of over the past few decades, I think software engineering is the only new, um, is the only new occupation, only new major occupation that didn't exist a hundred years ago, right? A hundred years ago, we still had doctors, we still had teachers, we still had lawyers, we still had... Nuclear uh, physicists. We still had nuclear physicists, we still We had... did not. Yeah. Not a hundred years ago. It's a hundred... Not a hundred years ago. Check no, it. We okay, wait, 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 wait. We're in 2023, right? So a hundred... Two, fr two French uh, scientists that discovered fission, and I'm willing to bet that that was probably in like 1907 or something. Uh, I don't know why I said 1907, but no, it has not been a hold up. If, if, 2023. If, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So a hundred years ago was 1923, right? This was after. Okay, no, no, no. We 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 need to get to like 2045 before it's a hundred years after the Second World War. But yeah. No, well, the discovery of new position was in the early 1900s, I believe. Correct. So let's fit, let's fact check. We'll yeah. edit this later. Yeah, sure. Um, nuclear vision uh, discoverer discovery. It was in nineteen thirty eight. Nineteen thirty eight. Hmm. That means it's yeah. it's almost okay. It's close. It was within it was within a hundred years. Yeah. Let me see. Discovery. Nuclear. And I still believe that they were French. Uh, Let me see. Was it... Uh, okay. Discovery of radioactivity was 1896, actually. Right? By Henry Beckel. Discovers radioactivity. Yeah. So, 1896 to 1996 is 100 years. All right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, like I oh. said, <laughs> so no, but, but seriously, right? Even, even if it's not, um, even if it's not a hundred years, but at least you have very few occupations that have, you know, truly been innovative or rather has been truly unique that came out in the hundred years that a lot of people are doing and software engineer, software engineering is probably the only one. The so from that perspective, right, you can see why a lot of people are, you know, a lot of people are trying to become software engineers overnight, especially when they when they hear how much software engineers earn. And it's like, oh my god, I have to do whatever it takes to to make that kind of money because it's life changing money, you know, literally for a lot of people. But one of the things we want to look at here is to just be as honest and candid as possible 
right? So maybe maybe let's let's start with you, Scott. What do you what are your what do you what do you think are the downsides of being a software engineer in twenty twenty three? Downsides or the dark side? Dark side. Okay, dark sides. All right, what's the dark side? If you spent your whole life believing that you are inadequate, going into software development is going to continue making you believe that you're inadequate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Translated, if you have self if you have self esteem challenges, it's not gonna stop. No. It's only gonna be exacerbated. No, 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 it's not. Imposter syndrome. Yeah. Imposter syndrome, I deal with almost every new contract I start. Don't get me wrong, like, I'm usually one of the brightest mm. within the development team. And I'm being nice when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but every time I start a new project, it's always a new environment. It's always it's usually people I do not know, and it's usually dominated by by males. And you know, I'm trying to figure out who's the alpha, who's mm. the subordinates, and like, how do I get my job done by navigating this political arena that I'm trying to find out? So it's basically like all, everybody's alien, and I'm trying to figure out what they're about. I've never been to prison before, but I would imagine that it's probably similar. And uh, come on, I don't, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that close. Come on, prison is a completely different experience. Not that I've been are, to anyway. I, I wouldn't know, but yeah. People are filling you out, right? So, mm, like, okay. probably, probably okay. within the last uh, maybe eight to ten years, I've well, since I moved to Florida, I declared myself a senior, like. No one told me I was a senior. I moved here and I said I was a senior. Mm. And I've been able to like walk the walk for, for the most part. And so when you come in and no one really knows you, um, people kind of want you to prove to them or to demonstrate why you're in the position that you're in, why you're getting the paychecks that you've been getting, right? Mm. Um, and maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but that's that's the pressure that I feel is I I start a new gig. This gig has whatever challenges or opportunities for me to grow my my skills, and um, it's it usually has people that maybe doubt that. I'm the appropriate person for, for this position. They may doubt that I'm that I'm not the person that they need to be uh what's the word? Subordinate to? Mm. Subordinate, so, yeah. I mean that, that that that's one example. Uh I could pause or I could I could do a brain dump of some other things. Yeah, go ahead. The dark side of software development. Yeah, go ahead. Just uh, you know, outline everything and uh, we can help start picking them one by one. Oh, okay. So work life balance. Uh, I think that I have done a remarkable job set inside time, which really isn't organized. It's more of just if I'm home, crack, crack open a laptop, and um, just do some personal study, right? It's spend time with the people you love, you know, girlfriend or wife or kids or just friends. And with the limited time that we have on this earth, or do you tend to focus on improving yourself improving the way that you can earn your lifestyle and uh yeah so i i used to have a a rich 
hour in the morning of personal study, uh, an hour in the evening of personal study before I would do my corporate nine to five. And that could be as simple as trying out some code kata or reading some technical book or, or anything so that I could stay competitive and that I can put myself or position myself as an outlier five years from now, hopefully when uh, you say 10,000 hours. And I know that one hour a day or two hours a day doesn't lead to 10,000 hours in five years. But basically just always have that pressure to to not be obsolete and to try to ensure that you have a place or you have a capability to to earn money. Mm. Um, and I know I'll butcher that, but that's some of the pressures is trying to be relevant. Yeah, but pressure to be relevant. But how did that affect you personally? Have there been events or consequences of you know this pressure to not um to constantly you know show yourself and improve and all of that stuff like has there been situations yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like i used to so I, i like to i like to do things that encourage productivity and so something that I used to do was it's one thing to to try to be productive, sit down and crack open your laptop and write code or or read a book every day, right? Mm-hmm. Or spend a couple hours a day reading a book that's related to your career so that hopefully you can increase your hourly rate by knowing what most people don't know and and having employers recognize that. So with that said, I used to say, all right, well, how can I put myself in a position where it doesn't feel like a burden when I try to do this every day and I try to make this a daily ritual or a mm-hmm. daily habit? Um, if there's a new video game out, I'm probably going to be playing video games instead of reading a book or writing code. So I probably need to remove myself from the PlayStation and I probably... Yeah, let's 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 do it at Starbucks. And if I don't really feel pain if I'm rewarding myself with food, right? In fact, if I know that I'm going to get sweets or get like food, then I'm actually looking forward to it. And so mm-hmm. what happens when you do that for like 5 years? Uh, you start developing hypertension, you start developing high blood pressure cuz every day, maybe even twice a day you're eating like two everything bagels with cream cheese. And you're sucking down frappuccinos every day for like five years. And, and that's not healthy, right? Hmm. And so when you say about the dark side, it's it's how do you how do you mind hack into trying to be as productive as possible so that you try to be an outlier? You try to be the technical authority in the in the state of Florida or in the in the city of Lagos, you, you really try to be the technical authority of whatever that you think is important as a skill set that's going to pay you and provide a lifestyle that that you want. Um, and, and the cost is, well, opportunity cost. So what are you going to give up to, to make that happen? And with me, I feel like I sacrificed part of my my health that takes uh for me a long time to try to balance over again yeah yeah that's that's one that's one that many people don't even know about you know um like for example i have this hump on my neck because for close to i don't know 15 years i've always been like this um and you know there's this there's also, in fact, it was one of the reasons I, I, I had to get like a standing desk and all of that stuff is because, uh, yeah, you have to be comfortable with sitting in one position for hours on end. You, if you can't do that, you can't be a software engineer. I'm sorry, right? No amount of motivation is going to make you enjoy, is going to make you uh, good at being a software engineer if you don't enjoy sitting down in front of a computer for hours on end. Right. 
I have um, a hack for that. Yeah. So what's your hack for that? I lay down <laughs> with the laptop in front of me and I program like that. Okay. I, I used I, to. I, I, lay, I lay on my stomach. Yeah. I used to do that, but it's, it, it wasn't really comfortable. My elbows would start to ache after a while. Right. Because I, I'm, I'm like this on, the, on the bed. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's, so for me, one of the, the major downsides on my end, so in your own case, your, your downsides were, um, the work-life balance stuff and also the, um, feeling of being inadequate, right? Um, yeah, yeah for me, the first one hasn't really, I think I, I experienced it like twice in my career, but other than that, I've never really felt it, um, and I think the reason for that is that I'm someone who I started with nothing, right? So I always see myself from that light of, I don't know anything. I don't have anything and anything I learn, anything I, any knowledge I come across, right? Is a plus to me. So, and because of it, I never really saw myself as an authority. It wasn't until much later in my career when you know, I, I can definitely say that now. But up until that point, I didn't see myself as an authority. And part of it was um, when I was still in school, I think I was in final year. Or, I think, no, I wasn't in final year yet. I was in my third year. We went for a mathematical competition for programming in, um, in Abuja. That was a long time ago. So... And I remember vividly that, you know, everybody was like, ah, Odi is good, Odi is good. Ask Odi to join uh, the team that will represent our school. Let's let him go there. So they looked for me in the, <laughs> they looked for me in my hostel because I, I didn't used to attend class. I was very, very wayward in school. So <laughs> um, they looked for me, uh, flew me over to Abuja. Abuja is the, is the capital territory, like is the, um, is the capital territory of Nigeria. And we went there and all the best software engineers in the world, sorry, not in the world, in Nigeria, just came to one place to all combat each other. And that was the very first time I felt like a speck of dust. I felt like a fly. It was almost like all the knowledge I had gained, right, was absolutely nothing. And these are the people I was supposed to compete with. Um, so immediately right my response to it wasn't really to feel so bad i i kind of flipped it in my head oh this is an opportunity to talk to you know really good software engineers and get as much you know suck as much knowledge as i could from them and yeah it, i and i actually did so it was there i, I learned about uh, uh, uh regex that was the first time I even heard the word regex. Up until that point, I didn't even know if I needed to manipulate strings, I would just use um, string functions to do it. So somebody there, like there were some problems we were working on and the guy was like, yeah, you could just use regex to do this. I was like, what? What is that? And the guy looked at me like, you don't know what regex is like. How dumb are you? Oh my God. That was so condescending. I still feel chills. <laughs> mm. I still get chills, you know remembering it and so that happened and then the real exam came and when it was a real exam a coding exam the way they were doing it was they will give you the question give you a sample input show you what the um, um, expected output should be and then the invigilators had their own inputs right that they they had internally that they will hide from you so you would write your code in such a way that it will read input from a particular path. And then when they want to, when you submit your, when you want to submit your solution, they would plug in their flash drive, run it. It would, your, your, your program would generate a different set of output. And then it's that output you would submit to them so that internally they will compare the output your program generated with their own output as well. And they also so the way it works is if you submitted a wrong solution right they would um subtract max from whatever your final score is supposed to be and 
they gave us six questions and we had six hours to do these six questions and let me tell you that six hours my team we did nothing we weren't able to answer one question out of that six and not only that were we not able to answer one question out of that six most people there that i was thinking are so high and mighty none of them were able to get in it as a matter of fact the guys who won they won it because they used java instead of c plus plus and java had big integer so they used big integer to solve the problem so the problem had something to do with you know using very large numeric values and stuff like that so those guys just used big integer and they passed long story short is i learned two important lessons that day the first lesson is you will always be a you will always be a noob compared to somebody else so like you said if you're not comfortable with that with that uh, uh with that uh, imposter syndrome right quote unquote you have to you have to be comfortable with being a beginner with with being a fool let me put it that way you have to be comfortable with that uh, uh um um persona because like what I normally say, because even when I join new companies and I start asking questions and it's like, oh, he's asking us so many questions. Are you sure he deserves to be here? I always tell myself and if and even on one or two occasions, I've also, I've also voiced it out. I've always told them, look, if you I'm a fool now. Yes, I don't know this thing. But if you tell me, if you teach me, then I'm no longer a fool in this uh, 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 thing that you are supposed to teach me. So I can only be I can only be a fool once right and given enough times of learning and and you know enough experience then there will be no situation where i will be a fool does that make sense so i see every time i feel humiliated for lack of knowledge i see it as one less um one less uh, uh, barrier out of my foolishness right one less <laughs> one less uh, uh, um one less thing that I have to worry about not knowing, you know. So because of that, I have the boldness to ask questions, even if it makes me look silly, right? Even if I'm the quote-unquote senior developer in the team and I don't understand something, I would ask a junior developer and, yeah, you call me a fool if you want, but it's only a matter of time, you know. Um, mm -hmm. the, yeah, this, the second one is the work-life balance situation, right? Um, yeah, that part like i said there is no walking around it if you're not someone who is comfortable with sitting in front of a computer screen for hours on end then software engineering is not for you because you will be frustrated very very quickly especially when you have to deal with technical documentation right um me personally i am not someone who is i can read obviously i have very good reading ability um, I recently took IELTS, um, English test for Canadian immigration, and I think I scored like an eight or a nine. So I'm really, really good in reading and writing. Like that one, I'm sure there's evidence to that effect. But the problem I have is that I am not a, I'm more of a visual person, right? I think visually, I don't think with words in my head. Um, so, or I do think with words sometimes, but most times it's just, pictures and you know images which is why i like video tutorials a lot and which is why i also like uh teaching uh giving like making video tutorials is because that's what helps me you know and because of it if you're not someone who i can tell you that i have watched hours and hours if not weeks of video tutorials in my span of being a software engineer and I don't even know enough based on the things that I think I should know, right? And there are so much more uh, 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 stuff that I need to go and learn. And yeah, it, you just have to, you know, pay that price of allowing some other areas of your life to suffer because you're spending so much time learning. Yeah, so that's something that um, probably should have been at the front of the list. When it comes to the dark side of engineering, I would say the unfair, 
I'm fair as I know the the appropriate word. I'll just I'll just say it. The expectation of what they believe you should know. Mm. If you ever look at a job description from uh, the job description, it pretty much has like it's coming to see every single technology that the ID, IT department uses. And there's an expectation by X, by HR that the candidate that they're looking to hire has all of those skill sets. <laughs> so they'll say, and this is one of the biggest reasons why I never got into web development because I know I can't keep up, right? But they'll say, how, how often do you see C++ included in the skill set in addition to C Sharp and HTML and CSS and JavaScript and React and Xamarin and SQL? And it's like, and I, and I think this is probably where, uh, and I'm not trying to steer this into uh, a different direction, but I think that's kind of like some of the differences between genders is from what I've heard, um, it, it may be common for, for women to not feel comfortable if they don't have like the majority of those skill sets, like mm. 90% of them like signed off on like, yep. I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that. All those technologies I have experience with. All right. Someone like me, I'm like, I don't do JavaScript, don't do HTML5, I don't do, I don't really do SQL, but you know what? I think I am one of the technical authorities in the city of Surfside, Florida for C Sharp. And I'll apply. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. But the, the expectation for you to know all these different technologies that honestly would take probably like 10 years to to have a expert level skill set for each one of those. Like, I mean, not 10 years for each one, but it would take 10 years to like, okay, I'm going to focus on all this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be like in the 90th percentile and I'm going to know so much trivia about each of these skill sets that, that they're asking this candidate to have that's required that's required for this job. And then like, let's say you get hired. They're not required for the job. <laughs> they're not. And sometimes like real talk, like real talk, sometimes I feel like, no, they're required for me to 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 have this job. But. I don't feel like it's required for other people and well, that, that could be a separate subject. Well, to be honest, right. I don't think it's so what, one of the things, so there are two things at play here, right? The first is that most companies don't even properly know how to, um, interview for job positions, right? So they probably just get someone to say, okay, let's just look for a similar role, look for those requirements, add it, and then they will call up the developers. What else do you think the person needs for this role? And then the developer will just mention one or two frameworks or libraries, and then it gets added, and then rinse and repeat. You end up in the scenario you just uh, um, outlined. I think that's what, where most of that is coming from. You know, Most companies don't know how to properly recruit. I think the second aspect as to... The second thing that, uh, that totally sucks about it is by the time you actually do the job, you now quickly realize that the thing you, you actually do on a day-to-day -day basis is like just two or three of those lists of that entire list and not the, you know, all the crazy things they put there. Um, I think one of the reasons they, they do that too is that they are thinking, oh, we want someone that could be easily interchangeable. We want to be able to move this guy and put him there and all of that stuff. So, which to me is just dumb, you know, 
when it comes to like real companies that really require that kind of broad base of knowledge and experience they usually don't ask for a single thing they usually make their their interviews as vague as possible so whether it's microsoft or any of the big companies they don't interview you for a specific language or a specific technology because they know that you know first of all when you join them you have to learn all those things anyway but secondly is that they want to know that you have the base broad understanding of technologies right and then on the job you can learn whatever specific skill set you need to succeed yeah i honestly don't think that stuff matters yeah I don't and so that. like sometimes i'm like you know what yeah i got 80 percent of what they're asking for but you, and you know what i'm gonna bill them for it you you want all these technologies of the it department Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna pay for it, right? <laughs> it's not sixty dollars an hour. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bill rates one hundred. Bill rates one hundred thirty-five an hour, right? Because you're 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 saying that you want uh, uh, a someone that's competent in all these skill sets. All right, well, pay me. I have. Right? A, I have. They a don't hot, think about it like that. I have a hot they take. Don't... I have a hot take though. So here's my hot take. Okay. I think that they are trying to use requirements to look for a specific kind of individual an individual like me for example who is interested in trying out all technologies right learning everything there are very few technologies i haven't are, are there any i can think of there are very few technologies that i haven't you know written code in have a compiler for it compiled and run code with it right like done some basic things with because i'm just a naturally curious person so there are so many things i know how to do whether it's html css javascript you know angular front end back end and so on um part of it too was the fact that you know working in a startup um, earlier in my career and also trying to start up my own businesses and so on and so forth you find out that you have to wear all those hats. You have to wear both the DevOps hat, security hat, software engineer hat, front end hat, back end hat, and so on and so forth. And I think one of the reasons they do that is because they're trying to look for that kind of person. So it's very rare that I see, I'm talking anecdotally now from my own perspective, it's very rare that I see any, you know, uh, um, uh, um, uh, big word, cloud right all these big words and stuff like that where i don't know something about all of them because personally my attitude is i need to know a little bit about everything right i don't need to be an expert in machine learning to understand how to you know um how to train a model you know what a neural network looks like what's a perceptron and all of that stuff like i don't need to be like hands-on doing it every day but at least have some a little bit of understanding to be dangerous enough you know so i think that's something that anybody who wants to be a software engineer needs to know how to do and again speaking of you know the uh, uh, dangers of being a software engineer learning all those things just means that you will have to sacrifice even more of your personal time sacrifice more of your uh, hobbies right if you really want to succeed as being a software engineer it has to consume your life it's very rare that i've seen um software engineers at the, to be, to at the top one, of i honestly believe that yes yeah i i yeah I, I've, I don't think i've seen any software engineer who is at like the top of their game that isn't you know what that isn't skewed somehow in interests and stuff like that like such people it, it I think maybe I've seen once or twice. There's one of my friends like that who, funny enough, he's no longer a software engineer anyway, but he used to be really good when we were in school as a software engineer. He used to be a very solid software engineer. And he used to be part of the school football team at the same time. So, we, in fact, he was so good with the two of them that we, 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 were, we were amazed which one he knew how to do better. We weren't, we weren't really sure if he was better as being a software engineer or an academic or whether he was better at playing football um, but such people are very very rare and even then right now he's no longer in software engineering because yeah to climb to the top of this mountain 
right? Because technologies keep coming out every day and getting abreast with new technologies is going to take your time and energy. And yeah, you have to make sacrifices. You will make sacrifices in your personal life. You will make sacrifices with your friends and family. For crying out loud, I was in my, in my grandfather's funeral reading a C++ book, right? And that's just the reality. For me to get to where I am now, that's what I had to do at the time. You know, I used to do this. Uh, so it, back in Africa, right, we didn't have computers the way you guys have it here in the West. So for us to to have connection to the Internet, for example, we would have to go to special places called cyber cafes where, you know, you pay a certain amount of money for a period of time and then you can do whatever browsing you want to do. And one of the ways I learned web design was in fact, the way I downloaded the first Visual Studio was I had to go and pay for all night. So we used to call it all night. So you pay at 8 p.m. Then from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., right, it's free browsing. And I would have to stay awake through the night, you know. And you can't sleep because you sleeping means you're wasting the money you spent. So, and I, I did that a lot, you know, uh, um, coming up and those were sacrifices that i made and yeah that affects my character in in a lot of ways um so for example going out is, is something that doesn't really appeal to me and you know my wife has to like drag me literally to learn how to go out and stuff like that but yeah that that is a sacrifice that is a very in a way it can be very painful to pay if you are someone who is very social and you you're someone who goes out a lot and you have friends and you do other activities software engineering is probably not for you you will be miserable if you if you get get into software engineering you'll be like scott nimrod <laughs> yeah um yeah, so let me, okay, because because of time, let me, okay, what about, uh, for me, I think the last one I, I would like us to talk about is burnout, right? Burnout. Um, as a younger okay. man, burnout was one of those things I was like, really? People get burnt out? I don't understand. But as I, as I got older, man, it's, it's devastating. Um, I remember, so I will say my own story, then, then you can, you can talk about yours. I remember when I was trying to get an interview to a company um, and we were given three days to work on a project and submit it. And I coded and coded and coded and coded. And the best way to describe it is for me, coding, writing code brings joy to my heart. Like it's, it's, it's fun. I enjoy doing it. It would be akin to eating delicious food, right? That's that's what coding is like to me. Now sure. imagine now imagine if imagine if your favorite food, right? So what's your favorite school food, Scott? Like if you had to eat one food, that would be it. Bang bang chicken and shrimp, cheesecake factory. Okay, bang bang chicken and shrimp, right? Now imagine if you got, if you were giving like three days to eat a whole truck of that chicken and shrimp just picture that scenario in your head now at first yeah. you're, you're going to be enjoying it it's going to be fun right but after a while you will get exhausted you'll be like ah, i want to do something else but you still have to keep eating and then after a while you will be totally um full totally exhausted you can't do anything but you have to still keep eating and eating that's what burnout is like that's what it was like for me was that i coded and coded and coded and at first it was fun but it got to a point it was no longer fun but because i had a deadline looming i had to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing that by the time i got to the deadline i think i even missed the deadline by a day or so but by the time i got to the end right of course the project was spectacular and everything and even when i got into the company everybody was like wow you did you know your 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 submission was exemplary and blah 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 but i remember i remember being totally burnt out to the point where i couldn't look at a screen anymore i was just exhausted and it completely drained me mentally and physically that i couldn't even do anything for close to three days i couldn't code i couldn't do anything i couldn't 
I couldn't even do my job. I was just numb. And part of it is that if you're physically tired, right, all you need to do is just relax, watch TV, and you're good. But when you're mentally tired, even the ability to concentrate on TV just dies instantly. Like you're you're so drained at that point that you can't you 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 can't anything that would, that requires cognitive ability would be painful to you. Have you ever experienced that before? I've experienced burnout before. <laughs> that that I do remember was um, like 10 years ago, I was working on a WPF application and I was building an inventory system. And this inventory system um, had a catalog of, I think like 4,000 different parts. Hmm. And I remember the, my first time trying to write it, I didn't have any unit tests because I didn't think that it was really necessary because it was just straight crud. That's what I thought. But there was like a lot of filtering and I ended up having to start from scratch and and spend like nights without my boss knowing, hmm. trying to rewrite it and, and do test driven development. And I just remember that I had put so many hours into trying to get this WPF inventory system working that my chick at the time thought I was shitting on her when I was literally in the office at three in the morning trying to build this inventory system like 45 minutes away from home. She didn't believe me. She thought I was sneaking off with some other chick. I'm like, no, I'm running C sharp and WPF. She was like, what's that? <laughs> All right. And I remember, uh, I remember going to Subway on my lunch break <laughs> and uh you know subway is one of my favorite yeah. places to eat for lunch and i remember i finished like my foot long meatball sandwich and uh i was like i'm not going back to work <laughs> I know I that like, feeling, yeah. No, I was like, I, no, seriously, I was like, I can't go back. And so I called up my recruiter. I was like, hey, I just want to give you notice. Like, I'm on my lunch break right now. I ain't going back to work. I'm done. I don't think I'm delivering um, the quality. I don't think I'm delivering for, for your client, and I'm sorry. Hmm. Um so I just want to give you notice that I, I can't do this anymore. Like I, I could not go back to work after my lunch break. I, I couldn't do it. I, 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 when I say I could not do it, I could not do it. Yeah. And, um, he made a call to my employer the employer claimed I was doing an excellent job, this, that, and the other. I, 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 I did not want to bring myself back to that job. I did not want to bring myself back to that keyboard. I did not want to bring myself back to that editor. I did not want to bring myself back to any of that. My mind had shut down. Hmm. It did not want to entertain any more of that at all. And I think, I think that was my first classic case of, of burnout where my mind literally resisted it's like, it's almost like having a curfew and you're hanging out with your friends, having the best time of your life because it's like your, your senior high, high school days and like life is only going to get harder after this chapter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your curfew is at like 11 o'clock at night and it's like two in the morning and your boys is like, Oh, Scott, don't you have to be home? And you're like, no, I had to be home like three hours ago, man. Let's just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I'm home. That's not going to, it doesn't matter. If I, mm. I don't want to go home. Why? It's, I'm just going to get beat and then put on punishment for like an entire summer. So F that. Let's keep going. Go, go, go. <laughs> like, it's like, I, I just had no, I, I couldn't go back. 
Hmm. So, and I'll talk to other people. Like, um, you know, Sean, the one I do my masterminds with every Friday. Yeah. He he had mentioned, like, the military service and how he had got burned out and he, he couldn't do it anymore. Like, and Damn. it was affecting his, his mind so much that he, I think he got discharged for it. Damn. So. Yeah. Burnout is, is really, really ter- terrifying, honestly. You, like, you get, you get mentally sick yeah 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 you get mentally sick it feels and like I, torture uh-huh and it's it's, and it's not like a first world problem but no. like it's yeah. it, it's it's not a first world problem um it's like like i said it's much difficult to cure because like i said if you're physically tired right you you've been lifting bricks you've been doing stuff then the solution to that is just to relax, right? You just relax, you feel better. But when you are mentally burnt out, even relaxation doesn't... Because what people call... People forget that what you call relaxation still requires like some mental energy, right? So whether it's, you know, um, going out, hanging out with friends, watching TV, all those things require some kind of mental energy. The only exception will probably be just to lie down and sleep, right? But oh, it, so yeah. you, you know you're burning out when you're dreaming about <laughs> the code that you're writing to, to solve whatever problem that's been bugging you forever. Has that happened to you where you dreamed? Yeah, yeah. That so, you were programming, so, and you you wake up and you're exhausted. Like you burn so many calories in your brain. From solving problems while you are unconscious. That is it's happening to me. Yeah, yeah, that is true. So, but in my own case, right, those those symptoms don't aren't really a side effect of being burnt out. I think for me, it's a side effect of when I'm trying to figure something out, and maybe I'm while I'm working on the PC or I'm reading a book, I sleep off. Then what happens is my brain continues, picks up from where it left off, left off, mm-hmm. and starts trying to Damn piece it, things Chris. together. Damn it. Yeah, but like I said, you know, um, for me, being burnt out just correlates one to one with a, a kind of hatred that, that that builds up in my psyche for the work I'm doing. Right, that hatred. And the, the way the hatred is 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 it's not even like I hate the code or something like that, but it's more like there is a the motivation to keep going, right? What what you and I call motivation when we sit down and we're excited to get to work or stuff like that. That now not only goes to zero but flips into demotivation. And one of the things that I would like to say, you know, is is that one of the ways I've been able to mitigate this is that once I realize it in myself. I just stop. Once I realize I'm slowly starting to get to burnout, I just stop. And the reason why I stop is not because I'm trying to, I can call my boss and say, hey, I don't think I'll be working for the rest of today. I'm taking the rest of the day off. And the reason I do it is because the illusion that you can keep being productive, once that point has been hit, is a lie. So you find out that you start using even more energy and achieve even less, almost to the point yeah. where it just becomes diminishing returns. Di- and yeah, it just reminds beco- me of yeah crunch crunches at um, video game companies. Exactly, because it just becomes counterproductive at that point. You are better off stepping back, going um, somewhere else, falling asleep, um, doing something else, and coming back to the code. In fact, on several occasions, when you come back to the code. You now figure something out that you are busy trying to burn out on the night before because you are trying to to uh, 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 accomplish something. So, yeah, because the work we do has to do with detail, right? You have to pay attention to detail. If you write the code in the wrong order, if you do certain things, if you miss a semicolon, for example, you know things will will, will be will be badly or, screwed. Up. Or you're just approaching it wrong. So, like what I do. Mm. I think, it, what's today? Today's Sunday. I think this happens to me like Thursday or Friday. I literally just hop in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, 
F you keyboard, F you editor. And I'll, I'll be like, oh, I'm going to take 15 minutes and just like, just sit under the hot shower. Mm. And like, that helps. Other times I'll be like, going to the beach. Mm. You know, go to the beach for like half an hour, hour. And I'll come back and then those Damon threads are like running in my mind. And I'm like, I was attacking this wrong. Mm. <laughs> I don't even have to write code for this. <laughs> that happens too, yeah. <laughs> uh, that happens too. Uh, All right, man. I is uh, these are the down the dark sides of being a software engineer. You know, the best you can do is to mitigate it. Yes, you get paid a lot of money, but at what cost? You know. Um, Sometimes the cost is steep, but as with everything in life, it's all about trade-offs and figuring out what trade-offs, um, what trade-offs make sense for your personality. And I can imagine that if I was a different person, like if I was someone who was more outgoing, someone who is more extroverted, yeah, my life would be hell right now. But part of the reason why I don't feel so bad is because it aligns with um, my temperament and my personality trait so yeah it's not for everyone that i can tell you <laughs> yeah i think that makes sense i uh i don't i'm not really it's weird i i i try to knock off everything i can knock off during the daytime hmm. um and uh I know, I know we're wrapping up, but usually my time and the calories that I burn in my brain usually are opportunity costs for like one of, I think, three things. It's for the next hour to two hours, mm -hmm. do I ride my motorcycle, <laughs> do I go to the beach and, and maybe work out, or do I write code? Those are the three things that I probably do most heavily during my waking hours. And it's always a mental battle, which one has a higher return on investment. It's motorcycling. It's a de-stressor. I'm free. I'm fluid. Uh, going to the beach, I get to work out. I get to be productive. I get to connect with nature. And then writing code. I continue sharpening the saw mm. and I'm able to basically maintain a strong mind so that whenever I get my next contract, I'm just razor sharp. I'm quick, 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 quick. And, and, and I, I justify why I get paid the, the money that I ask for. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not sure what that has anything to do with, but whatever. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, all right it's been real uh, yeah. like share subscribe i do have to admit and i just have to be vocal about it i think the last uh the last podcast we did last episode was so much more i don't know connecting than this one yeah <laughs> <laughs> but who knows let's see um if you guys liked the video just like and subscribe and let us know what you um, enjoyed from the conversation. We really love to to hear your your thoughts on it. I think sometimes it, it, you can't know upfront what people will find valuable. It's just to you know shoot the shot and just you know talk about it and and just see what sticks with people, what resonates with people. Yeah, all twenty one subscribers. <laughs> yes, twenty one subscribers. Thank you right. so much. All right. Bye.